Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a dark beer review that, for once in the last couple of weeks, isn't Guinness. That's right, everything Guinness has taken the YouTube beer scene a bit by storm in the last few weeks, but it is time for something equally dark, but definitely not as average, shall we say. This is from my local brewery, Blue Monkey, and this is a Maple and Pecan Imperial Stout weighing in at a whopping 12.2%. I mean, I don't really know what else to tell you, to be honest. That's everything. It's maple, it's pecan, it's 12.2%. It is a big boy, and it comes in a lovely Blue Monkey, their new craft style can. This time, they've gone for the green accent. I don't really know why. Green, maple and pecan, green. It was released around St. Patrick's Day, but it's not anything to do with that, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, interesting. Maybe they were just running out of colours. Anyway, that doesn't matter. What does matter is what is in here, and I am pretty eager to find out so before we break into it here is a quick look at the can as i say that standard blue monkey format with just yeah that beautiful gorilla motif and a load of info on the back there wow wow they've done some uh, big beers this year but this this is one of the biggest now i must say and this is not a complaint as such this is an observation Blue Monkey fill their cans more than anyone else. We know that, a, I mean, a 440ml can is 440ml, but there will be a little bit of diversion, as I'm sure the can is actually slightly larger than the listed measurement to ensure you definitely get enough. But they, they're they full. Like, you open it and it ends up on your hand full. But I'm not complaining. It means more beer. Just be wary. And let's get this into this lovely glass. I'll say it's very full, so easy does it. Now then, in the glass, that does look absolutely fantastic. Look at the head on that. I mean, I'm sure it won't last, given that it's 12.2%, but it looks luscious, creamy. It is, wow. Um, there's no light coming through there at all. That is a pitch black beer. It is completely, it's completely solid black. There's no light getting through that at all. And it's got this lovely kind of coffee crema coloured head on it, a bit over a finger in width, um, or maybe about a finger to be fair. It seems to be changing, it was a bit bigger to start with, now it's disappearing quite quickly. Uh, even as I'm talking, you probably see it dissipating, but um, good looking stuff. Let's find out what the aromas are like. Oh, it's so inviting. Most of Blue Monkey's Imperial Stouts so far have been derivatives of their Silverback MP, which like, the original Silverback is just a straight up, no adjuncts, no nonsense. Big, brash, but beautifully balanced, proper imperial stout. And then they've done spin-offs, you know, different barrel aging processes, whatever. This, I don't know if it is silverback, but it certainly doesn't smell like it. It's got a distinct softness to it. It's almost butterscotchy aroma, and it smells like it's going to be sweet, pleasant, not overdone. It's not fueled with, what was it, maple and pecans. I'm not getting... You know, it doesn't smell like a stack of pancakes, but there's just a few kind of underlying sweet notes that make me think this is going to be properly, properly good. There's a few kind of de facto stout things in there. There's a bit of there's a bit of vanilla, sweet coffee, you know, some roasty tones, but they're pretty subdued to say how potent this is. Right then, let's get into it, shall we? Cheers. Uh, I'm now not so convinced on my statement that this, this isn't silverback in its origin. It smelt very friendly. The taste though, that's a bit more robust. Complex doesn't quite cut it. It is layers upon layers of different notes and experiences this beer. It's got nice silky mouthfeel, maybe not thick for the style. At 12.2 you could expect some properly almost like chocolate milk, thick milkshake kind of consistencies. It's not quite that but the the kind of the looks, the almost the slipperiness of the beer. It's just, yeah, it's creamy as it goes down. And there's a whole host of proper dark malt, bitter, rich coffee, vanilla, hints of some dark fruits, perhaps. Traditional stout notes, but then so far, the pecans haven't really shown themselves yet. Although as this warms up, I think they might. But right now, that maple, finish it's just like a 
it's acting like an enhancer to the base stout. It's not overtly maple at this point in time, but it's it's like the most brilliant seasoning use is what I would say. And I take it back. Now my palate is acclimatizing. Right up front there is when you get that nice semi-savory nuttiness from the pecans. And oh yeah, that is, that is very good. Right then, quick top to bottom taste test so you know what I'm talking about. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the beer and the can itself. So initially, it's pretty neutral up front. There's a, just a hint of bitterness, slight kind of cacao nib. Just It's subtle. It's You don't really expect a lot from that very first touch of the tongue. It's not a very carbonated beer. It's very flat, which for me is a big thumbs up on a dark beer. It's, it's pretty much perfect carbonation wise. It's not flat, flat, but it doesn't, it's not effervescent either, let's say. And then that kind of first third of the tongue, the semi dry, savory nuttiness of the pecans takes you a bit by surprise, if I'm honest, when you first sip it, because you're expecting with the aroma something quite sweet, which is where you'd start to get that introduced normally. And in this, it's just been pushed out the back door in favor of those nice, rich, but as I say, semi savory, nutty notes. I love nuts in beer. I think it's just, it works so well for me. I, it's that sweet, savory thing. It helps bring balance in something that otherwise might be a bit too sweet if it didn't exist. And not that this would, I don't think, because it's not an especially sweet beer to say it's maple, but yeah. It's um, it's very well used indeed. And then mid palate, some sweetness comes in, but it's not distinctly maple yet. It's almost feeling a bit milk stouty. I don't know if there is lactose in this or not. We'll find out later. But yeah, it's got that kind of lactose, almost creamy milk sweetness thing going on mid palate. There's not a whole great deal other than that. You're still kind of dominated by that nutty note from the start. And then as it hits the back of the tongue, instant drying a little bit more roast malt bitterness comes in a few cacao nib vibes a bit chocolatey and you're thinking where is that maple where is that maple gone and in the aftertaste after a few moments it starts to work its way up and if you've ever had proper proper maple syrup not the stuff from uk supermarkets that's cut with you know corn syrup or whatever the stuff that's maybe not as sweet as you were expecting it to be it rides in and actually as you kind of sit there and think about it yes you've got a bit of a dry tongue a bit of roast bitter drying stout quality but the resounding flavors are maple and pecan which well is exactly what it says on the tin speaking of let's take a quick look shall we and see what else we can find out uh so uh this is best before the 15th of the ninth. so i think it was a six month shelf life on this although at 12.2 percent i'm sure it'd be fine a bit beyond that um the ingredients are water malt wheat hops and yeast so it looks like it's not a lactose beer they've managed to replicate that feeling which is interesting um the hops are magnum used in this um and otherwise, and that's it. It does say it's suitable for vegans, so it's definitely not a lactose beer. It just comes across that way. So, um, yeah, big thumbs up for that because that is quite a skillful thing to pull off. Um, there are an eye-watering 5.4 UK units in this can because it is, as I say, a very big boy at 12.2%. And that is about it. However, this is the second beer in about as many weeks that I've reviewed that has an eye-watering price tag. This is retailing at £10 a can. Full disclosure, I did not pay that much for this can because I'm reviewing it, thankfully. And it's very difficult when you've not paid that to be subjective about the price. But I'll do my best. This is undoubtedly £10 worth of brewing finesse. Absolutely no questions asked. However, there is a problem with that because Blue Monkey also make this beer, rum and raisin barrel aged out at 6.5%. Now, granted, there is almost twice the amount of alcohol in this one than there is in this one. So, if your aim is quantity of alcohol, which it isn't for most people in craft beer, let's be honest, then the fact that this costs about half of what that does would make sense but that's not the full story and whilst this is a very very good beer so is this and i'd be hard pressed right now to tell you well let me put it this way i'm very be very hard pressed to tell you that the one we're reviewing is better than this one because i don't think it is 
I'm not sure how much difference there is. I think they're pretty evenly matched in terms of quality. And ultimately, which you prefer will just be based on personal preference. But this rum and raisin barrel aged stout, I, I'm, I'm taking two of these for the instead of one of those in general, I'm afraid. And that is a problem with 10 quid cans because there's so much out there at five or six quid that's pretty damn good, like really good. So yeah, that is a bit of a question mark in my mind on this beer. And unfortunately it will be for many others as well because stuff's not cheap right now, including beer, apparently. So yeah, final thoughts. If you really like Maple and Pecan, this is a fantastic beer. And if it's your favorite kind of combo and a stout or whatever, it is worth the price tag. But if you're not sure, me personally wouldn't be taking the risk on something I'm not sure about for that price. So yeah, difficult one. But in terms of the quality of this actual beer, that is stunning. And that is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already, subscribe if you will be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.